Two days ago, though, we did get some sad news from Schalke Null Fear, who were leaving the LEC at the end of this year. The club is struggling a lot financially, especially due to COVID. And we got relegated into second Bundesliga, and that means in football uh, a very, very significant decrease in revenues. The reality of the situation was we were not able to take a single scrim set from G2, Rogue, or Mad Lions. Sometimes, like, even though if you're the underdogs, you can still be a better team, and at that point, we are a pretty good team. Will they go for the dive? Of course they will. It's Fanatic. They're looking to finish it. Abadage flash out to safety. Abadage looking to turn. Oh my god! Back on the Pippo. Valk back on the Pippo. Abadage! Are you kidding me? Klar war, glaube ich, vom, vom Anfang an, dass wir es anders machen wollten als andere Fußballclubs. Das, ich glaube, das ist auch immer ganz wichtig bei Strategie, sich zu differenzieren. Und gleichzeitig hat die E-Sports-Branche, glaube ich, das gefeiert, weil mit Schalke 04 ein Player auf den Markt kam, in den E-Sports hineinkam, der, glaube ich, viel Reputation aus dem Sportbusiness mitgebracht hat. Wie geil ist das denn? Also hier gehen wir in die Pick und Bandphase. Der FC Schalke 04 feiert hier Debüt. I remember very vividly in 2016 that uh, we were on the brink of exploding as an esports in terms of League of Legends. And I remember that when we heard about the element spot being acquired by Schalke 04 very much, we thought this is amazing because this might be our kind of jump to the next level, having these football teams involved and especially a team like Schalke 04. It's such a, a love team that gets the people talking, that gets the juices flowing, that gets people excited and that have had really a lot of ups and downs when it comes to football. And we were hoping that they would be a force to be reckoned with in the EU LCS. Four games in and Misfits say hello to your newest LCS team. We'll see you in 2017. I thought at the beginning, oh, this could end up bad here internally. The, the relegation felt worse for like the eSport community and obviously um, Alexander Jobs, who also pushed for the decision, was not happy about that. I remember distinctly that we were all pretty terrified in terms of the production and, and the broadcasting side because we thought, oh no, they did it, they took the step, they tried this and now it didn't work out. Now they are out immediately. We're never going to see them again. We're going to lose all this interest from, from the football fans and from the football teams, etc. You just said, okay, um, we, we failed, Tim. Make, make it up for that, make it good. Um, next year will be better. Um, do your job properly. <laughs> that for me, the decision they made later to come back and to keep trying and to keep building that team, that to me meant that Schalke was one of the good ones. We knew because of the people behind the scenes and because of the interest in keeping it going, that they would be back. They had this massive stadium. It was enormous with a, with a really big training room. A lot of facilities um, and an apartments as well. This was all kind of new to me because I'd never really gone away from home to compete in League of Legends. Schalke with another clean fight get the unanswered hat trick on the series against NIP to reclaim their spot in the LCS. I think at the time, Upset and Smithy and Memento Torre were all in their prime in terms of like peak of their career at that moment and how well they were playing the game. We were like a family, everyone was joking around, there was a lot of banter, and I think the dynamic was really good. Uh, I felt very early that we belong there and that this is something we want to be forever. Um, and um, that's how we worked on that. No matter what happens, I'm proud of you guys. I think we're doing a good job tracking that heat piece. Let's, let's keep yeah. doing it. Gets us the back line as Neon is forced away. Limit trying to get away as well, but Reckless is on the hunt and on the chase and the shutdown comes out. Neon down, Jinx down, but here oh, comes Bokeblade. the Noxian guillotine! Broken Blade cutting through G2 as quickly as he can as Caps. Now it's all on him to do it again. Broken Blade! Triple. Broken with the decimate, heals himself back up. Caps with the shot, stands up the guild. It's a quadra and Broken Blade bring down the axe! Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Get him! Tip it up, tip it up, tip it up. Guys, <laughs> 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 end, 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 end.
Let's fucking reverse sweep G2, huh? Look at G2, Limit, look at Limit! G2 just to clear out Limit. He fell Caps! He has pushed back the short wave, but still connects and Caps is gone! Magnus Storm coming out, Limit's underneath the tower, he's Neon. still able to survive! Reckless has to flash away, Neon going forward, tumbling in, looking for the kills here onto G2! And Shaoke have done it, they found two kills, and they have found the silver scrapes! But for them it is a golden moment, as they shot down G2! Uh, no, 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 they're going to game 5, boys. But there's the TP immediately from Rogue Blade Limit going in with the Magnus Storm and they're looking for the damage. You can see everyone the rock in. Here comes Aatrox G2. You've been in this spot before. And the Aatrox Dragons and the Emperor finds his victims. A double for Neon, a double for Broken Blade. And Wonder is Thunder. Oh my God, it's almost just man. So I think the G2 is at a point. I thought they were going to struggle the longer this game went on, but it turns out they now have an unkillable cop. It's like four bodyguards and protect the president. One last sally into the breach as Neon oh, gets culled to half his HP. One attacks the tower for a year. The charm comes out and is all on limit. He's already dead before he can even join the fray. No flash burn. No Magnus <laughs> Storm. Shut down. I'm sorry, but did you have some DPS, Shalker? Because it looks like you're the ones getting DPS down. <laughs> Like that though. I'm so fucking close to the one series. We learned a lot of stuff for the future. I think they were, we had like a lot of bad moments, but we had like really, really good moments as well. Yeah, I learned a lot. Just be happy with it and just don't dwell and be able to move forward now. We're still in playoffs, right? The show must go on. This year we were really um, trying to aim high. So in this off season, um, once me and Abbas signed, we actually went over a lot of the very, very high profile and good free agents. We were thinking what are the strongest pieces we can keep from the Miracle Run and also what options do we have. Some of the obvious free agents that were available were players like Hillsang, Upset. Um, we talked to players like Elioya, for example making some very competitive offers and trying to build, I guess, what would be like, like an actual super team. Another day, another mile. You've been gone a good long while. Another hill, another climb. You can't afford to lose no time. And then uh, I was the third member to come on board, right? Uh, the talks were still with about top laner and about AD carry, right? Then we also learned that BB doesn't have a team for the next season. Me and him were already really good friends. I said, I think this guy is really talented and he can play really well in the LEC. If you pick him up, I think we'll be strong. I knew already that I was going to play and I really wanted to play with Abba for a long time. I think he, he did improve a lot over the years and so did I. And it was, uh, it was really nice for me to, to play with him again. Another day, another mile. You've been gone a good long while. Another hill, another climb. You can't afford to lose no time. Broken by Gilius, Sabadaga, Neon, and me for the 2021 LEC season. My expectations were being a consistently like top four team, and then in the summer to go to Worlds. I'm here with uh, God Gilius, Abadaj, uh, Matushka, uh, and. The, the sky is the limit, so uh, hopefully you guys will like the, the show that our uh, director here is uh, doing. Um, and uh, yeah, see you guys on the, on the which day are we playing? Yeah, on that day. The preparation for 2021 was very special compared to the years before. First of all, we knew in September, um, October that our project might end the year after. Secondly, we needed to convince the club that even though we are in a very difficult situation, that we still need to have a decent budget to build up a roster. I think one topic I do have in mind all the time, and also Merv mentioned yesterday that this is a topic for you guys, but it shouldn't be, um, because we can't change anything about that. This the situation of our 
organization in general, about the football situation. Um, obviously, the football club is suffering at the moment and is doing not very well. Last week, finally, we won a game. Um, but most important for all of you guys, this doesn't um, impact us at all, at least in that environment we are in right now. We are cross fingers for our football team to win because this might help in the long run, but for this year, it doesn't impact you guys at all. I think we did a very, very good job, like building up that roster with with a, with a, uh, with a, with a given with the given budgets and with the, with the circumstances. Um, so I have been very happy about that. Um, um, and we all have been very confident about the 2021 season. But to be honest, the games we lost and also the teams we lost against were good teams. Like, if, if you look at it, like lately, we Rogue and Mad Lions and... It's true, they were good teams, but if you're just saying... Oh, they're they're really really good. Good. Oh, they, I see progress in the team, you know, they are playing yeah. better and better. When we brought this roster together, the plan to compete for the top three, four spots in the league. Um, immediately, I think it was very concerning that a lot of our scrim results and a lot of our gameplay was uh, honestly really bad. I just also want to be realistic because if you start saying like, oh, but we're doing okay when we lose every day, then it's like denial. You know? No, no, it's fine. But today we're playing good. Also, I think drafting is so important. Mm -hmm. Like these drafts are just like enemies just, just trolling. It was obvious we were not bad for a team that was really aspiring to go to Worlds. It was, it was very concerning actually. Honestly, it's first match of an entire year of playing. I hope no one's like nervous or really caring too much about the results today. Like just, just play. Um, just win, yeah. I'm, I'm not too concerned either way over what happens today just because I'm so happy with the progress we've made over the past two to three weeks. And also, uh, just play as a team, by the way. Just play together. Yes. Help each other out. Involve people in place. But really, that miracle run was incredible. And the big yeah. question is, can they turn that miracle run now into a miracle season? Yeah, but the Rift of Shaka inside the base. The dragon is going down. Can a What's going. happened in the other base? Right now, Super Mini is pouring through the middle. There's too much happening. Comp is starting to back away. Teleport coming to the middle lane. Shaka, they've got one Nexus turret. The cleanse is now coming. Kaisa, Kaisa, Kaisa. In the end, 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 end. Oh. Yes! <laughs> Gilius is diving in, look for Jezu who flashes away, Broken Blade coming in as well, Gilius tries to jump on, the Shockwave lands, the hero's entrance is there as well, and this is the perfect team for Shoka! They found their man, they found their mark, and they'll be able to pick up two kills quickly! Broken Blade on the back line takes out Genax, and there was only Treats and Blue left alive! Blue, almost done for, one more spear from Gilius in his rear will cause him to die! Oh, I got stopped, I got stopped. No, 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 Early in the season, we actually won, I think, four or five games and started the season really strong. God of Java. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dive into the back line. Catches them coming out. Remember, Hansama doesn't have a flash as Neon gets the kill on Trimby and Hansama is the target. Hextech Automatum will help them get the kills and Spires down. It's a double for Neon. Blues. Schalke. Four games in a row. Their best record since spring 2019. Schalke clean it up on the fountain. But behind the scenes, it felt it felt like it wasn't consistent or reliable, which is why in the middle of the season, I think it kind of caught up with us and we went on a seven game losing streak. I can't help looking. Can don't fight. That's over. Oh, my. my bad, this game. It's fine. It's not fine to lose like this. I can okay. go soon. I can run, I can run, I can run. Now we're too far behind. I can't kill the Olaf here. Don't. I can't, we can win this. Look at me, I'm strong. I'm strong as fuck here. Uh, it's I all you need, need to cut, need to cut, need to cut. Two quick kills for G2. There's another end of players. Broken Blade trying to, kill, to do what kill. he can. But he's doing raw reckless and Broken Blade's doing oh. what he can. But he's the super so far behind. Oh, Blue's gonna push in. Gilly's gonna try to finish it, but he just doesn't do any damage. The shield is massive. And that's it. SK, they've done it. They've tied up the scoreboard. They will tie Shalka no fear. They're gonna take a victory lap through the Shalka fount. Close this one out nice and slow, but they will tie things up at five and five. Um, yeah, I just want to say that I don't care about Italy on my team again. 
I've talked to many junglers many times, all of them said Nidali is extremely useless, unless you are very good, and we are not very good, and our Nidali games, Nidali has always looked useless, and I just can't play this game, even though I'm playing Kaisa and fucking Jin, the whole game is unplayable, because we cannot contest them a single time, because there's a fucking scanner running around, it takes him moments speed. The game is unplayable for me, because of this jungle fucking matchup, I just don't see why we keep clicking this fucking jungle, like, useless champs, like, if he had picked Skarner every single game on stage, he would be winning. That's just my issue. I think the main reason why we went to a slump is that, unfortunately, Gilius' champion pool was heavily affected by patch notes, and that's how the game worked. And we couldn't find a, a, a comfortable pick for him to perform well. Like, do you guys disagree? Do you guys think like we, we should draft like this again? Like, if we run it back, pick all five teams. I don't mean Nidalee, just Nidalee. I mean the comp in general. I mean Galio only engaged. I mean Nidalee, Zoe, Nar. Like this, this with Kai yeah. with low engage. Do you think it's good? Do you think I it's think all five? I think the draft is fucked if they pick Nidalee on three because we banned okay, we banned Nidia and they banned Nidia. That's not a question I'm asking. Is our five chance good? Do you guys think it's a good comp? You guys want to run this again? No, no. Because I legit fucking messaged this comp to, to, to Abba and I had this in the meeting. I said, I don't want to run this comp. I think we will throw the game. And, lose. and we just, and everyone's like screaming like, it's so fucking good here. We have to, we have to pick this. Oh, it's so fucking good. And then we do it. And then but, 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 but what's the alternative? What's the alternative? Can you tell me this? I don't know if people play Darkman and Skarner into the middle. They play that? Then we should do that. That's what, would no, they play pick Skarner? No. What? They would not play pick Skarner. What do you mean? They would pick Nidalee on three. But man, you make Nidalee sound like the most broken champion ever in jungle, and then when we pick Nidalee, they're picking the champs that you are so afraid to blind because they can go Nidalee. You pick, you can't, you can't pick Grace because they can go Nidalee, but when you pick Nidalee, they go Grace and Skarner. Like, explain it to me. Like, even though your level one was fucked, you're still up one level, you're still up 20 CS, we still get first Herald, we still manage to use that to like snowball the gnarly, like you do a lot of good stuff. But my issue is, I just don't see the Nexus is dying. And I think we should work as a team to improve at it. And we should not drop this carry jungle stuff altogether. And we should review our bots and really try and improve it. I think Felix is right. But I also kind of want to like draft to win in our official matches as well. And then, yeah, every team has slums and some teams deal good with it, some don't, and we didn't. So we lost a lot of games in a row. I think everyone play, played their Part for the losing streak, like we all had our struggles. All right, then I kind of don't want to do level one stuff anymore. Like only if it's for both. Okay. Not for jungle? No. I don't think it's good. Really? Yeah. Okay. I disagree, but I guess we could not do this. Like I, I just didn't like it because of misfits as well. Kind of yeah. fucked me. But okay, sure. Because we. I feel like we are kind of like we kind of did it without like thinking too much about it, and like now we kind of gave it like we showed it so much that we do it that it will. It's so obvious at this point. We didn't lay bait that much on stage. No? I mean, like me, like as example. We didn't lay bait for like three or four weeks. You you think so? Yeah, no, I know so. But like things went really wrong over the last weeks in the level one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you died level one in one of the games. Yeah. But that wasn't because we laid it, just because you died. Yeah, it was. It would have ended. We laid it once in four weeks of LAC, and then you died once in the first four weeks. We laid it once for the Dr. Mondo, and it was good. Oh, that was good, yeah. And then we laid it once in Olaf for Tech Room, and I think it could have been good, but it wasn't. Oh, well, Hacker just took my red? Like yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But maybe we should just practice without it for a bit and just see how it goes. Mm, I think if it's good, we should. If it's bad, we don't. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? And that was our weakness. We couldn't really play through pressure a lot like Rogue does, right? I think if Rogue has pressure champs, they can translate it really well, but we couldn't. And after we realized that, Dylan was like, okay, guys, we're not playing those kind of champs anymore. I, I really wish to uh, play champs that have a good initiative, mostly on top lane and support. And uh, generally the, team, the other teams were also much faster than us to make the move of finding something new and, and playing it than us. And I just, we were kind of on a losing recipe for like two, three weeks. And then we were like, okay, we actually have to change something, right? And I guess that's what, that's what we needed. Try to tank first item. 
into dead man's bait, into force of nature. Sounds very new. Sounds very really yeah. competitive. It's full tank. It's Koreans and Chinese users. Yeah. Where are you? Actually, I'm very proud of my work during that time because I feel like I had a very good input on the meta. I was basically the guy who said hacker in tank is OP. And I showed the data for Gilius and why it is OP. And then I showed there was a, a random Korean uh, jungler that was playing hacker in tank and just stomping everyone on solo queue. And Gilius looked at that and, and, and said, oh, actually this might be very broken. Can you check that hacker will actually on the China tank build? Yeah, no, Europe, I'm checking it. Maybe Europeans use it. Yeah, seems high. Yeah. Oh my god. How much is it? What the fuck? It's 57. Oh my god, it's so much higher than the other yeah, ones. Yeah, it's fucking OP. Yeah, okay. I do that on error as well. <laughs> on error? Yeah. My hagron is a speedrun. Also, but I don't do damage with that build. I, I am I'm fast. You actually do, because you oh, get do? speed, of course. It's fine. You get me speed and you will be team fighting on an Oriana. I guess so. You have an Oriana and a Sivir, you know? It's not your you don't even need to Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Also, you will do damage because of it. And he tried, and it was actually super broken. Uh, we ended up winning five games in a row with Hackroom or something like that. And no team was banning the Hackroom. So we were just basically abusing the can tank Hackroom a lot. And that was a main factor of our comeback, I would say. So I'm very proud of how I, how I worked with Gilles on that. I remember Dracos was there in the scrims for you guys. And he was watching it, and he says, he's like, Cage, I'm going to tell you something, but you can't tell anyone. Tank Hecarim is so OP. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, can't wait to see it. He didn't give me any context. He just told me Tank Hecarim was OP. And I was like, okay, show it to me. Let me see it. And then Schalke, I think four out of their three games, they picked Tank Hecarim. And that's what won them a lot of the games because of just how, I won't say hidden OP it was, but just how strong the champion was in general and how they drafted around it. Went over the draft with you guys today. Pretty simple draft. Um, honestly, guys, I'm really happy with the week. I think we're really good at playing these types of team comps. I think it puts a drug of support in like a condition to make really good fights. I think if the game goes relatively stable, we shouldn't feel like we need to do stuff or uncomfortable, like don't feel stressed. Like, because we'll always be solid, you know? Like this, is, our team comps are solid in the fact that we can always contest later, we can always fight later. Um, doesn't mean we can't press for winning, but it means that we shouldn't feel pressure in the game. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Resets and retakes. So we get a good kill, we push our waves, we reset, then we retake the other side, and then we play for objective. Boom. We just realized that we really needed to simplify things and play some very, very, very simple team comps, which allowed us to draft some team comps that were very simple to play, straightforward. I think played to a lot of Gilius' strengths, played to a lot of Abadage's strengths as well, because he could just play independent mages and then allowed everyone else to build around this with a very easy to execute play style. And basically we dropped everything else. We just focused on this only. And we started winning uh, quite a few of our stage matches. This is really important for Schalke especially. They're in one of the three teams that are tied for the playoff race right now. They're on a six game losing streak. And this is probably the strongest opponent in terms of schedule right now that they're gonna have to beat. Sun is like what? Just, uh, TP, TP. Slowly, yeah, slowly, slowly. Like, look at frontline, frontline, frontline. I have ulti. I'm ready, you can do this. I'm ulting you, can do this. Oh, that's just that. That's a disaster. Mad are pushing for the win. They don't believe in miracles. They're going for that third and fourth spot. And potentially, Foxy, they're going to challenge the top of the standings in the LEC. Push short, okay? I have a flashing game. Yeah, we should look, we should look. Wait, wait, wait. Alistair? Yeah, this is good. Front, front, front. Broken Blade's looking for the engage, but oh, the Magnet Storm is huge. And now Broken Blade is there. It's not a good enough shockwave on the back line. It's still alive for Schalke right now. Neon kiting backwards. Abadage untouched. He goes in straight onto Promise Cube. Abadage versus oh. the world. A double kill for the guy in the back line. And straight onto Neon. That is the Feather Storm already used. He flashes across the wall. Julius finds the fight. Limit is still alive in the back line. And here comes Broken Blade for the time being. Where is the boy Faker Dage? There he is. He picks up the first kill of the fight. He goes for the second as Neon gets one too. And White Knight and Promise Q are forced back through mid lane. But they don't care about the Scion. They care about the game. Nice game, guys. <laughs> Loose streak ends. Can't really... I still have ult. I still have ult. Yeah, I can flash combo on anyone. Yeah, if you see it. Okay, for Zoe, by the way. Drake is spawning, guys. You have to fight now. 
Anyone is good, anyone. Sorry, sorry. But here goes Limit once again, Baby on Death comes out, and even a sleep broken blades is the nightmare of Fnatic. He dives in onto Bwipo. On from Limit. The front, as here comes the shockwave, and Bwipo is immediately Ooh. dead. Danny Gage was absolutely nutty. The charm coming out as well, and there's the double. Abadage teaming up with Limit, and that's a wombo combo I'd love to see again. Self-made though, caught out, Fear Beyond Death goes wide. Limit dives in once again, Niski up towards the side, can't really get into this fight. And at the moment, Fnatic are fighting a 5v3, Broken Blade stepping in once again, and upset goes back to the fountain. What was it? I thought we lost, were losing 15 minutes. Okay. No, 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 I always knew it was one, actually. Good job, guys. Okay, okay. Just missing, careful random TP oh, players. Fighting top. Probably should hear a couple. Oh, 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 Abadage is just too strong. He goes golden in the midst of the entire team. They are just absolutely wiping the floor with. Dive them, 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 Today is a double shine of wind day. For the old. Well, we have another shine. This evening is football team versus the second one. over, no? No, we're playing second one. Horrible. I mean, I, I, I never lose hope. But <laughs> is it, if we win today, if we lose today, okay, I, I will agree there's good hope. But if they win all the rest of their games, they can win? Of course. Oh. Of course. Yeah, the issue is winning the game. <laughs> <laughs> just win five. We just have that. <laughs> it's, it's just nine points. And there are, how many points are left to get? 33, something like that. It's possible. No? It is possible. Yeah, if they had to play, why are Leipzig, Dortmund, yeah. Auschwitz? We, all, we played all these teams. Yeah. All those top teams we played. It's kind of like how we played already G2 Road. Yeah, kind of. Um, and they have a new coach, a new um, top management. Maybe it's getting better. All right. I like how you have hope. I don't know anything about football. <laughs> I know that the enemies keep kicking the ball in the net. Remember their last game of the split was against XL. I think that was a deciding game for playoffs. And then they busted out something quite different where they went for like a Nocturne Cartus GP comp, like a triple global unexpected kind of composition. Because XL obviously banned away the Hecarim after the three game win streak that they had with it. Bro, we're not. We don't care. The genie about is not the genie. That's not the factor. Yeah. Yeah. It's Cartus ult, GP ult, Jin ult, into Nocturne diving the back line. That's the. That's the song. And I remember the second Nocturne was locked in. I can remember very, 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 very well. Vedius sprinted from the caster room all the way to the casting desk just because Nocturne was locked in and then gave a breakdown in the draft of what Nocturne mid does because he's a one-trick Nocturne mid. Actually, some big balls picked this in the air elimination match. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, this is the best job we could do against this. Let the game flow come, okay? We play like we always do and we just win. The loser of Schalke versus XL is eliminated from playoffs contention. So regardless of the Vitality win, uh, of course the teams went into this and they had to win no matter what. 52 flash pole boys, or hex flash pole boys and go in. Here comes the paranoia, it's perfect. Ender, you predicted it, the Requiem. Uh, and Schalke's dreams perhaps are coming to a floor. Can I go anytime, buddy. Can we go here? Yeah, I'm holding. Keeping as well, keeping as well. Good fight, good fight, good fight, good fight. Oh, at least the one shot, I think. Because immediately they are just deleted off the map. Gilius sings a song and their souls are sent to Valhalla. Dan killed off in the end. It's triples for Schalke. They have no lantern. They have no lantern. Going, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, no. Patrick pops a stopwatch. Maybe he's been able to delay this enough. I didn't see if the red room's gone off. Now it comes out and Limit still takes the kill. And Schalke delayed it. It's actually so fucking broken. They can't play the game. Excel, you gotta get back now. You gotta get out of there. Can they get the recalls off? He's Limit not gets dead. close he's enough. Not dead. And he stops cries from backing away. Now Excel is trying to TP back. Neon has killed off Patrick. No. The shutdown for Shagalad. The TP in. The Baron buff won't be enough. And Schalke have made it to playoffs. No, it's no. not enough. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was stole stole my kill on bot. Me? Felix. Oh, Felix. Your motherfucker stole my kill. I didn't even get a Give big props to Neon and Limit. You guys fucking smurfed the last four games super hard. So like you guys. I mean everyone did. Yeah, but you like from Felix and Bibi, I expected because they're my German brothers. But you guys like. Holy shit, you guys played so good and <laughs> I'm really proud of you. Good job. Yeah. And there's like a really clear plan of what we're improving on. You guys actually worked on it. Um, and I'm also really happy that like we fixed like our playstyle issues too, you know? Like I'm sure if we had drafted easy comps the whole split, we'd probably be a bit higher than standings or whatever, but it doesn't matter. The point is we fucking made it and we learned and we grew from it, you know? And, and that's more important than anything. And let's go deep in playoffs. Oh, that's so good make it to the playoffs in the upper bracket in this system that we have, meaning that, you know, they avoid, in theory, some of the better opponents till later in the season. Now, unfortunately for them, they had to play G2 Esports. Now, that is really unlucky because out of all the teams that you'd want to play, G2 is simply the one that you want to play the least. They are a super team. You go down two games and everyone thinks it's done and dusted. It's going to be a 15-minute third game and G2 is going to make it to the next round. But no, you stop them. You win two games in a row. You force them to match point and all of a sudden, you have the chance to knock G2 out of the playoffs and advance yourselves. You have to beat them in game five with the same vigor of your miracle run, your mini miracle run, and all the support that the fans have given you throughout the last couple of years to make sure that you can win game five. It was in the air. Schalke and Ulfir had the lead. They had the high ground. How are they going to lose this game? This was insane. This was just another pedestal for Schalke to jump on and knocking out G2 out of the playoffs but it wasn't enough. G2 beat them in game five and it was heartbreak once again for the team, unfortunately, but hopefully they would be able to pick themselves up in the next round. And from then on, I think the non-believers, if there were any left, they started believing that Schalke could make a super deep run into the playoffs and perhaps make it to their first final since 2018. against the European titans of a fanatic, the six-time EU LCS and reigning champion. But I think that Schalke split was magical in a way that it was different. And actually like seeing all these fans actually hyping us up and really being fans of us was something you didn't expect, especially when going against Fnatic, right? Like name sizes was a bit different. Yeah, basically when we stepped onto the stage, just being introduced, the crowd erupted so hard, it was so loud, we couldn't hear anything at all. It was unforgettable because you are staying there and you also see family members that came out to support you. That Madrid fans really showed me that there are fans out there that are there for my teammates and there are fans out there that are there for the Schalke Field organization. The, the, the big guys at the organization, at the actual football organization, probably saw that we have this this inner ability to actually make it somewhere if we just build it right. And I think that's what Schalke really took to heart. This is what all pro players are working for, to be in the finals, to reach worlds. These are like the biggest challenges you have to face and the biggest achievements you can have. I think beating Vitality for me personally was like the highlight because I, I told my team back in playoffs, I told them, if we make it to playoffs, we'll make it to finals. There's no other way, right? And then finally, when we got that winning kill, around the Nasher, uh, just all emotions that lose where I feel like, man, I, I guess I'm, I'm still good enough to do that. Baron is about to be secured by Vitality. There's a chance he's down low. Jasuki's alive. He's taken out by Nukta. It's a trade back, one for one. All of a sudden, oh, Schiller are trying to wreck Vitality. The Vitality, they won the tiebreakers, but they falter in the semi-finals. And for the first time ever, Schilke Nulfia are in the finals. And obviously I first thought, crying, which is something I happen to do once in a while, but I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, it was quite the emotional moment for me. All right, here we are. Welcome to the Castle Desk for Shalka No Fear versus Fnatic. We are so torn on the desk. We're actually going to ask Twitch chat to help us at the start of our cast decide who is actually the favorite.
Yeah. yeah. Going back in I the can top. also look to fight here. Yeah, Udiel, can you look? No flash? Yeah, we can. All of you, all of you, I'm here as well. We can kill Olaf. Yeah. Uh, I'm hovering, actually. I'm hovering. I'm hovering. I'm hovering. I'm hovering. I'm hovering. I'm hovering. Go on TF, go on TF. Two weeks behind enemy lines. He steals the Olaf. Oh, he goes back over the wall. Abadage is just too damn clean. Selfmade got nothing on him. Oh, GG, GG. Nice. That's GG, no? I can look. This guy, no flash, no flash, no flash. He has no E2. I can go more, maybe. Osang now on the retreat, trying to dash away. Niski trying to find the sun card, but no. Shalka leaping forward. Neon leaping forward. They're pushing in. Neon going over the side. He's going to one shot. Pippo immediately isolated on the Akathian rain. And Shalka are wiping the floor with Fnatic. Oh! Ooh. Neon. Nice, Baba! Nice, nice. I kill him. Okay, I think I, I don't know if Kai says there. I don't think Kai says there yet. Just run nice, to our tower, nice, I think. Nice. Here comes Gilius. Whippo can try to deny this one. The knockup can come through, but Gilius with the sidestep there. Whippo's already gone. Gilius in the pit all on his lonesome. 3k on the dragon. Hillisang desperately trying to turn it upset on the outside, but nothing is happening. Selfmade wants to get anything done, but the CC is there. Shalka are slaughtering Fnatic. Our carries are fed. This is so fucking fed. Fnatic are lost across the map. Upset can't even get back to his own base. This is domination from start to finish for Shalka as they move up to match point. We are going to see an, an adaptation in terms of side selection. This time it looks like Fnatic will be on blue, Shalka okay. will be on red. So there will be adjustments, Cadrill. No matter what in draft, there will be adjustments. And my question is how much the strategy changes? Is it's Azir, it's Azir, Azir. Okay, he's keeping as well with the Aatrox. Azir? I ult Aatrox, yeah. I ult Aatrox. He's gonna get taken down in the end. Niski got, managed to take down Neon. Whippo on the backside. Big healing. Can he finish the job? Abadage needs to get out. Limit will get taken down. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Right. No, 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 no. Will they go for the dive? Of course they will. It's Fnatic. They're looking to finish it. Abadage flash out to safety. Abadage looking to turn. Oh my god. Back on the Whippo. Valk back on the Whippo. Abadage, 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 are you kidding me? No! Let's go. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Oh my god. Nice, nice, nice. Down time is ticking for Fnatic, but is it out here? Body slam forward from limit. He drops. It's Hillisang and upset versus the world, but the bot lane will not be enough, and Shalka no fear will sweep aside Fnatic. Uh, yeah, man. Good job, guys. Let's go. Good job. People underestimated us. I think we were a lot better than what people thought. And yeah, we just came together as a team and made it happen. It was a really quick 3 0, and we had good prep, we had good gameplay that day. Yeah, Bibi, Gilly, Zabe, Neon and Limit, they were all playing out, out of their minds. So that's why we got a lot of the wins against like G2 and, and, and Fnatic. Uh, I believe they were just really overperforming and I'm glad that it happened. I don't think anyone got too much of an ego boost from that, like beating Fnatic. I mean, sure, it felt nice, but you still have to be realistic because then the next game, <laughs> it was Rogue, you know, and like Rogue is probably like the biggest check you have to do to pass, like to actually win the playoffs, you know, and then that's where we, that's where we were stopped, right? So I just want to think: Do we trade or do we contest? And if we contest, what is the status of the roamers? I think we focus on the swap and second buff. Early game should be pretty Gucci, and obviously same stuff as usual. If we're winning, just play together, sink our bases. If we're losing, just make them flip it at Nash. So I'm Medic. I'm joined by Vedius for this final elimination series of the weekend. Schalke versus Rogue. And I don't think many of us expected to be here just a couple of weeks ago. It's very true. What surprises me is how many of the analysts have actually put their faith in Schalke. Oh. Like, uh, the analysts quite rightly say, Schalke is riding the momentum right now. Okay, They're I'm ready. Us. They're sleeping us. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Okay, okay, just, just take the Drake, no? Drake is out, Drake is out. Yeah, we get the Drake. Pops the floor, Stuart doesn't get the stun. Gilius, the reset on the Drake. Inspire goes in, Gilius secures it. Limit tries to jump onto Inspire, but immediately the stopwatch is there. Abadage dived in here as Larson tries to put the damage down. Limit already down to half HP. And here comes Tremby. And here come the rest of Rogue. Gilius, you can have every Drake Penta. you damn well like. The Quadra kill for Larson. Clinical execution, clean game from start to finish. Rogue looking dominant in game one. It's actually it's so sad. Oh, this is I can't believe it. I can't believe I walk backstage and we just know you can't even win. Yeah, it's just and not it's so fucking depressing. 
point of fight. The pings. Lickety split as Larson doesn't have flash back up. The gravity field's gonna come out. The fear does land. Abadage flashing forward, looking for the damage. They don't quite have enough. Abadage taking it up for ages. And he will fall. One for one trade. Abe. Like fight's about to come. Position. Limit has a great position here. Gilly has dived on. TP's coming in. There's the Magnet Storm as well. And you can see already the damage is just so big onto Inspired. Oda Wamne tries to join the fight. Broken Blade going in with the Paranoia. Hans Summer forced away. The Fate's Call will bring back to him. Reed Limit almost dead. But Oda Wamne dives across the wall. And now it's on Neon and Abadage to try and put the damage down. But the Chaos Storm's going to do a lot. Neon dives in and kills off Hans Summer. We thought it would be Abadage who'd get it. But Neon gets the double. We should win now, no? Guys are so fed, yeah. Chalka can just walk it in. The Magnus Storm finds all four. And Neon laps up the kills. Abadage gets one. Broken Blade gets another. And Schalke take the second game in the series. Well, the game is so easy, by the way. Like, if you're playing scrims right now, we would end in 20 minutes, they would have FF, you know? Like, but we're making it our, like, harder for ourselves. So just calm down. Like, we really just need to take a fucking I mean, breather. The series resets now. We're one and one. Best of know? three. Best of three. Uh, obviously, a lot of learnings to be taken from both teams moving into the series. I'm tipping, I'm tipping. Go slow, okay, go okay, slow. Okay, okay. Wait for my TP. They is don't he? see me, they don't see me. Here comes the flank, inspired, not with the rest of Rogue. And here is Broken Blade. Already Gilius already dead. Larson pops the stopwatch. Gilius goes down. Broken Blade pops the stopwatch of his own, but Neon has fallen. And although you're gonna get Larson, you're gonna get wiped off the map. Broken Blade, not too much he can do. A double for Odo in the front line once again. Rogue were just too strong in the final fight. They executed well, and they will bring themselves to match point. I have ulti right now. Maybe yeah, yeah. It's hard, hard. Yeah, Shalke have decided they need to pull the trigger somewhere. Odo Wamne does have flash to try and get out of this. Slicing Mouse from going in. There's the stopwatch. And here come the rest of Rogue. Odo Wamne has got a flash across the wall. Trimby there. Onslaught of Shadows in by Gilius. The shutdown goes down. Hans Summer not able to join the fight as of yet. And Trimby's the next one on the target. Has to jump away. But Gilius diving forward, diving backward. Fate's call cool. will keep Trimby alive for just a moment. Shalke on the offensive. Those Mantra's ease, those speed up could be huge. Shalke may have turned this fight right here. They find Odo. They find two more. And Gilius is not done yet. Stunned up by Inspired. The Realm Warp's going to chase them in, but that bear should be able to escape for the moment. Dragon on the cards, though, for Schalke, and this is number three. And oh, here, the even oh, stable in the game. game. But we just... And no, okay. Kind of throw. Maybe they feel like they can win now. They have more oh. kills than enemy now. There's one in this push. What does Schalke no, see? There's no oh, one. here we go! Oh. Don't know. Oh. Odo Omni's in the perfect position for the flank here. Inferno Drake starting. There's the culling. Here goes Odo! Oh, he gets stopped immediately! Limit with a perfect play! But the rest of Rogue are able to dive in. Inspired gets on Neon. The shutdown on Abadage. Limit did everything in his power to stop Odo getting into the fight. But he forgot about the rest of Rogue. TP's coming in. Rogue are looking to book their place in finals weekend. That was a crazy engagement. Huh? What the fuck? <laughs> That's five man round. Into they, they didn't wumble combo. Dude, he was screaming. Dude, that was a scream yeah. right there. Do I had scream too? If I got that one. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Pretty close series, but I think they played a bit better, no? Yeah. They just like I think made streaming mistakes. <sighs> it's close though. Still happy though. Well, we did this, but at a point we lost seven games in a row. We're like. Eighth place or something, we're really struggling. We made top four, and we almost made top three, I think. Yeah. We almost made top three twice, versus G2 and versus Rogue. I think both sets we could have won if we played it better. But I think... I have... Yeah. I, I honestly think, coming to summer, we have to learn how to draft really winning lanes, and snowball. And I, I think... Should I not say it? Say whatever you feel like saying. I'm just I, I, I feel like we should have more weapons in like, how do I explain this? We should be able to draft really aggressive lanes and just snowball and I, I think we limited a bit ourselves, the split. With our, like, we didn't, we didn't I don't think we limited ourselves. No. I think we did a really good job. I, I, I think we played the correct champs for us, but I think we should Learn more variations where we, yeah. we can really like fuck the enemy. We just, we just didn't play it because we couldn't. We can't. And we so didn't, split, we didn't made everything in his power to give us the best draft we can. No, I, I know. With our ability to win the game. We just, we're not good at it. Yeah, and I think we should become good at it. We can. I think that's, huh? We can, we can. Yeah. Summer that, with one, we can. That's exactly what I'm like. And if we're about. shit in the summer playoffs, I, I, I know that Dylan did the yeah. best possible things for us to be able to win. 
But I think coming into summer, just focus on becoming really fucking strong laners. I will try to train a lot how to like time camps and play like I think Inspire plays really well. I think I'll adapt like this. Like you, you know what I mean, right? I don't know. Like it's uh, to me it's unacceptable that this like legit free variations with fresh, senna and the solution and that we don't play all of them it makes your job hard and it makes yeah. it's just so it's really unacceptable. Can I add something on this? And of course it's not your fault that we yeah. had shit results. And but can I everything can I, can I step up? add something on this? I thought that like I'm pretty sure if you spam something a lot, you can actually you will automatically become good at it at one point. And we should like watch replays, assist each other and really learn this shit, you know? Because like I thought I cannot play volleyball, but then I played it a bit more and then I could play it, you know? I mean, like that's that's how everything works. I think like yeah. It's just repetition. Yeah, of course, we didn't play any of these variations, but like at one point we were zero seven, and we needed like the most band-aid solution. And ever since we were zero seven, there was not a single game that we could afford to lose our series. So it was just too risky to start trying anything new. But like I completely agree with Abe that we should be able to play. I agree, and we'll we'll try. And I'm totally down to go into next season and try a lot of stuff. Also, to be fair though, I just want to like these games. You know, the reason we lose this last game isn't because Callista Lucian is OP. The reason we lose this game is because we win the game and then we fight too far into cannon ult and get reverse killed and then we dive mid into cannon ult and get reverse killed, you know what I mean? Like, we're actually, we're playing these comps pretty well and today I think we're playing I, I well totally too. think our comp was good, yeah. I just mean in a general thing. Yeah, of Like, drafting with rope today, everyone could feel it, no? They had so many fucking weapons and... We are they were fucking bad and yeah. we could have won all these games. Yeah, yeah, but my like point... Like, they had some good weapons on... We are like better players, don't you? Like, I, I thought... Well, I think today we were worse players. 100% we played worse. If you're limited on some champs, you know, we're always going to have our best champs and our worst champs. But the way we, we learn champs is important. Yeah. Because every one of you guys are good enough to learn a champion. You guys all have all the mechanics, the knowledge. It's easy. I mean, we have an analyst as well who can help you. You know? Like we have the tools, we just need to put in the effort. And for this split, it was enough to, to be fourth place. But next split, if you put more, more effort, you can win. Let's you guys are not bad. Let's start out summer really on a good level. Yeah. No more fucking loose tricks. It's fucking over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, people will remember we finished fourth place. But will people remember that we lost, I think, seven games in a row during the, the split, actually? and. We barely made it into playoffs. No, people will not remember that, but we do as a staff. And we see we lost seven games in a row because at some point the meta was not good for us and we were just losing every single game and we had no, no pressure, no jungle pressure. And I don't want to blame a single player, but we just felt like it was, in our opinion, the easiest change to make at that point. Everyone on the team, including players and staff, came to agreement that the main difference between our team and the top three was related to, to the jungle role. Uh, we felt like we had a, a, a very clear difference there. So everyone kind of wanted the change. Then we made a crucial mistake, actually, um, a very crucial mistake. Um, and um, I also discussed it with, with, with the coaching staff. Um, we didn't look into the jungle changes immediate after spring. We waited and waited and um, and didn't took a decision here. Somehow we couldn't even properly try out because there hasn't been scrim, scrim partners for us, um, players has been on vacation, etc, etc. So that was a crucial and a big mistake for the jungle decision. I received a call from Tim um, about selling Abadage. Um, pretty late into the off season between spring and summer. All of a sudden I got a message on Discord. Hey, Ali is gonna leave us for summer split. And we're like, this is a joke, right? And he was actually the first one to tell me uh, because he was really looking forward from my opinion on it. I couldn't really see myself leaving Schalke and like making a completely, complete change of everything that I have in my life right now. And so I, I was feeling pretty, confused 
but I, I wanted to hear what they can offer me. At the very first moment, we said there is there is actually no chance that we um, do a change uh, a change here and that we sell Abedaga. Um, and then um, they asked, is there actually no chance? And they and, and then I said like what actually sport business is about, and they made a first offer that make made me at least start looking into that. So I asked Bibi what he thinks about the opportunity and he told me If I were you, I would take that offer every time and not because um, you would like fuck people over on our team. Obviously it kind of um, put us back a bit because Abbe was uh, one of our strongest players, right? I knew that Abbe was basically the, the guy of our team, you know, he was basically the man who would carry a lot of games. So I was not sure about how we we would perform without him, you know. Like to me, it was presented like it was the only choice. So there wasn't there was no a yes or a no. It was just this. There wasn't there wasn't that. When your main goal is to go to Worlds and you sell your best player, I think it's just not fair for the staff and for the players because you're basically hurting the project a lot. So I was very frustrated with that decision. I saw a really good opportunity to make Worlds with 100 Thieves because I thought that the teams are a bit weaker here and that I can be a strong addition to this team and help them make Worlds. And also for my personal goals, I always wanted to make Worlds, but I just felt it wasn't possible with Schalke this year. And I thought it's going to be a good uh, experience for myself as well. I, I was happy for him. I was just kind of mad that like it is good for him right but it's also bad for us like heading into summer split and not having a mid laner like that is something that nobody wants to go through especially after a good spring split like that we as a team we were frustrated but in the end it's something good for abe so i'm not mad with abe or anything i'm just frustrated you know Long story short, they made an offer at the end um, with all circumstances um, um, uh, integrated into the decision making. Um, we couldn't deny because it was back then also important and, and very helpful for the football club, not for the esport department obviously, but for the football club. So we decided to sell Abedaga. And I think everybody knew that our chances of achieving our goal just became like way, 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 way harder and we would have to try and come up with something or be creative or come up with a solution to still try and compete. When I heard that Abbe is leaving, I was, I was sad, I was angry, of course, because I knew our chances for summer are a lot lower. And I was talking to Schalke to basically look for another team as well, because I didn't really see myself playing without Abba here. And then I got the message as well that they're doing tryouts for jungle. Ultimately, the roster with Gilius and Nuclear, um, I think the team felt overall um, was for a number of reasons, not um, completely functional. And we ended up trying out Kirei against a, a team that was playing at the MSI at the time. And we did quite well on tryouts with him. And everyone on the team felt like we could have a higher ceiling with Kirei, so we just went for him. And when the trials go really well, it makes sense to use that new guy, right? But like often scrims are fake info, so. Of course, Schalke bringing in two new players, Nuclear Int replacing Abadagas and Kire replacing Gilius, because it wouldn't be Schalke unless they subbed out their jungler between spring and summer. Okay, okay. it'll be a just hovering into mid, okay? It'll be fine. Try to get 50 furry. It's Look at me. Hot. Lula mid too, Lula mid too. Okay, I'm dashing. Oh, not bad. Okay. Ah, oh, so unfortunate actually. But that's... You can't go for this on stage, by the way, at 104. It's kind of over to be it. Oh, but no, but you do this in our first game, it just fucks like the whole... So Vitality off to a very good early start. Kirei, remember, has no flash. Spectral Moore gets the stun. Wind becomes lightning and Kirei becomes dead. Leader gets his first kill. Go on to beat it on Talia and his friends. And then go on stage and this happens. And everyone is going to say, uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. where's Gilius? Yeah. Yep. Make them chase this. Are they going hard here? Yeah. TP I behind, guide, guide. TP behind. Slowly, slowly, go on, slowly. Go on, go on, go on TP maybe. Did TP, I flash on him? 
Now we don't deal damage. Oh my god, dude. They converted a single kill into a huge lead, and now they're looking to end the game in 25 minutes. Yeah, it's over, it's over. Not what I expected, for sure. The game is just lost up. The game is just fucked up. We can play. Just, it is what it is. Just one game. Doesn't mean uh, every game will be like this. Mm -hmm. Kind of unlucky what happens. I mean, you can't kind of do it against little ball shit. Uh, yeah, but no one no one's showing the map, you just can't do it. It's just fucked up. Right? And then you have no flash run in, that you get mid double ups. You're just still walking up. It's your fault. It's your fault. Yeah. But it's fine. Yeah. It's, it doesn't mean that this will happen every game. It was a very volatile early game, and we we're supposed to have a lot of power in the jungle, and it got completely fucked. And I couldn't really play it like uh, I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. It's not my fault. Well, when we told me that I'm going to join the LEC, like it was in the middle of the EU Master, uh, I was kind of stressed with the idea that I'll join LEC with only like one split on the, in Prime League. When I first joined the team, I had at least expected the top four. I was like looking at the players, looking at our work ethic. I was sure that we could do it since I expect us to always keep on improving. And even if you didn't have a bad start, I expect us to always gradually like improve in a steady line. I was kind of afraid of of joining in the middle of this season in a team like that because like I would be the rookie, you know, and the group is already, you know, like kind of split because it was one of the with Sergen like one of the um, pillar of the team. I think most of us are okay enough to not let the storyline uh, dictate yeah, things. We've lost randomly a lot in the past years. We should be fine. Yeah, both looking, both looking, both looking. Both they go, both can, they go can TP, they go can TP. I cannot, I cannot. Vigo is moving, Vigo has this prior. My bad. I mean, we should never die to this. Yeah. Just by the way for me. It's Fulma, look at Fulma. Look, look at that, 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 Look me, look me. Down limit taking so much damage. Neon in the midst of Wonder. Wonder where's the Haymaker gonna go? He's gonna get a little bit of damage back. Nuclear Ant off to the backside. Reckless Calling back as much time as possible. Reckless is already dead. Nuclear Ant is now running wild. Moving through the entire team. It is Neon with a double kill. Yanko's running. He's feared, he's feared, he's feared. He's gonna get feared soon. Nice. Holy shit, nice. nice. <laughs> Are oh, they going on me? Look. I'm still watch. Them. I'm gonna go on set. I'm gonna go on set. Look, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay. I can, I can basically go. be back. Play slow, play slow. Zool, 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 zool. Yeah, 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 it's good, it's good, it's good. You can't fight, you can't fight, you can't fight. Cap reset, reset. Big of reset. I pull him off him, pull him off him. I fear set, I fear set, I fear set, fear set. No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Event, Can we? I can TP, I can TP. I'm coming here. Okay, kill Rel, kill Rel. I'm killing Ramble, I'm killing Ramble. I'm going on Tristan. But he is not enough on his own. Nuclear Int and Shalka no Fear will find the win from a devastating loss to a win over G2 Esports. Wow. Holy shit! Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. We had a, actually a very strong preseason, I believe. We won against uh, a lot of good teams. While in spring we could never beat the top three teams on screams, now we could actually beat them. In addition to this, I think that Kire in the scrims leading up to Summer Split was performing like phenomenally. Um, I think one of the best junglers in the league, actually in practice. I think that was a factor that made us believe that we were stronger than what we actually were. That was Zinzal because on screams we are getting Zinzao every single game. Uh, before it was actually like the meta champion or it was big ban. So we were just winning with Zinzao like every game and we were like, okay, we are actually good. So we had a week or two where it looked really, really good. But I always had this thought in the back of my mind that we needed to fix some of the more core fundamental stuff underneath. Otherwise we were gonna at some point um, <laughs> I guess like hit some sort of wall. Oh, we got, we got another one. We got another one. Nice. <laughs> got him. Level one stress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
It's a bit, a bit fancy, Terry, but kind of looks OP. Okay, you going? Go, 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 go. I'm not trying to mid. I'm skilling W. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you skill W. Oh, I hit him, I hit him. He, he dies here, he dies, he dies, he dies. Yeah, but we get assist. Let me get Perfect. it. Yeah, yeah, nice. Good guys. Good. I'm good. DPing, I'm DPing, guys. I'm I have heal still. I can cancel like early. Yeah, cancel her, cancel her. At all costs. She's not, she's not tipping. Six, stunning five. Teleport to channel. Here comes Broken Blade with the Blade of the Ruined King. He gets himself a kill. He gets himself a Heartbreaker. Oh, and he's no. now looking for all the CC. Gets the boop, chucks out the mines. Still has the Dredge Line available to him. And Limit and Neon are here for the support. Broken Blade, man. Nice. We kill her, we kill her. Wukong is here too. I think we win this, we win this. Give me, give, give me reset, 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 reset. Nice, nice, nice. Pushing slowly, up, nothing. Slowly, slowly, slowly. I'm okay, guys. You get three mid tower here, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting mid, I'm getting mid. Stay like this. I have one more jump here. I have one more jump. Yeah, Don't be scared. Look, 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 look. Yeah, just overstay a little bit, and there's so many members here. They can continue on the fight. They will indeed. The tower does fall. The engage comes up from the rest of Exile, and everybody's in the fray. So far, it's Kira that's been taken out. That's a kill to Patrick, who was so desperately in need of the gold. And Limit will be the next one. He's flashing for his life. Flash forward from Patrick. That is huge for Exile. That was really fucking over. No, 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 I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Front line, front line. Kaisa, 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 Kaisa. And Shelka focusing down the support ultimately costs them the fight and costs them this game. Yeah. Because they had 30 seconds. If you do Nash, they have to fight us. And we just win. I don't know why we went to Drake. Like, the game is so free. Just look at the press tab and you know where to go. This week, we're just playing really reckless around the jungle in our stage matches, and we're not really accounting for enemies. And then, yeah, and then mid, mid just gets fucking fed off of it. And then I think we made a good comeback play bot. It was good. But then I don't think, obviously, it's like hindsight analysis. Obviously, diving turret is fucking bad. Kind of sucks to lose, but BG2 yesterday, 1 2. We will improve. We will start winning. It's fine. It's fine. It is what it is. So pretty happy with our practice overall and how we're doing, so. We heard rumors of scrims being successful, actually being very strong in terms of the aggression that the team was able to bring against their scrim partners, but it didn't translate onto the stage and it didn't translate onto the professional games at all. We really didn't see any of the spark that was promised to us behind the scenes, and we really didn't find any of that magic that we'd known from Schalke in the years before. Kire really wasn't making the cuts, and I think when I look at the performance of Nuclear Int, he had some really great performances, but we have to remember this is a rookie. He has a lot to work with, especially in the constellation of a team that has to get used to not playing with Abadaga, who was someone who dominated the lane, who had versatility, who was able to roam and impact the, the map in completely different ways just because of the nature of his experience. You can't expect that of a rookie mid laner. And unfortunately, it meant for Schalke that things went from bad to worse to terrible. Being a potential esports team trying to sell their spot in a franchise league because their main team in sports is failing to compete. It is the news coming out um, from all the sources and from Schalke themselves that uh, they could potentially be looking to sell their LEC slot. And there were rumors going around that Schalke was trying to sell their LEC spot and working with Riot on this. Wir jetzt auch hoffentlich kurz davor sind, ähm, kommunizieren zu können und zu dürfen, wenn der Abschluss dann tatsächlich erfolgt ist. Ich habe es im Jahres und Nikolaus auch schon gesagt, aber vielleicht für dich Lars äh, und die beiden Alex, ähm, dass wir uns natürlich extrem scheiße damit gefühlt haben, dass Dinge ähm, kommuniziert wurden, ohne dass wir kommuniziert haben. Ähm, hat uns schon sehr, sehr aufgestoßen. Ähm, allerdings sind Claudio und ich sehen halt das anders, dass man erst kommunizieren sollte, wenn auch etwas dann final entschieden ist. Was wir, glaube ich, hier geschaffen haben, wenn wir das Ergebnis dann erzielen und äh, ihr seid die Ersten, die es von Claudio und mir erfahren und danach das Team, 
Ähm, ihr kriegt auch volle Transparenz natürlich, wer das Käufer dann ist, was der Kaufpreis ist. Also wir sind gerade äh, in, in den Absprachen, dass ähm, wir denen auch kommunizieren dürfen. Wir müssen uns da auch nicht vor verstecken. Ich glaube, wir haben ein gutes Ergebnis erzielt, wo ihr alle ähm, mit dran gewirkt habt. Und ähm, von daher ist es, glaube ich, aber jetzt für jeden auch gut, dass es mal zu einem Ende kommt und nicht dieses, äh, dieses äh, ich weiß gar nicht, wie man es nennen soll, dieses ähm, irgendwie weiß man es, aber es ist noch nicht beschlossen. Irgendwie will man auch darüber reden, aber man kann nicht. Und, und der Verein von, ne, sagt natürlich, dass es eine Erfolgsgeschichte ist. Ähm, und auch zu Recht, weil für ihn ist es ja eine Erfolgsgeschichte, sonst hätte er nicht so einen Profit daraus gezogen. Ich persönlich denke, das ist eine, eine Erfolgsgeschichte, die jedoch zu früh endet, die du viel stärker noch hättest aus, äh, na, erweitern können und noch eine größere Erfolgsgeschichte daraus machen könntest. Aber das das, das, sind, das sind Details. The rumors were true. Schalke is leaving the LEC. With great sadness, we must announce today that we finalize the sale of the LEC license at the end of summer 2021. 4 vai deixar a LEC ou a LEC no final desse ano. Eles venderam a Swiss-based uh, team BDS will be the new uh, team in the LEC for the next year. 26.5 million euros just out there in the Twitter post. Uh, that is not something that has ever happened in the LCS. There is a confirmation um, last week that we have sold to Team BDS um, for 26.5 million. I would say it is um, something huge and big for Schalke. It was, as I already mentioned, very, very significant and important for the club to be also financially prepared for the next year. And next year, I mean for the next Bundesliga year, which will start very soon. It's hard to put that even into words, how big and how important it has been to the football club. And they said all, um, thank you for the good job. and. Um, They have been happy, also happy for us, um, that we finally uh, finished that process. I didn't think that I would care when Schalke would get announced that they're leaving the LEC. But at the same time, there has been like an org that's been a part of the LEC, like, you know, history for quite some time. What I felt like was the more like important thing was the guys that were part of the, the management side of the Schalke team are not the ones leaving because I felt like they were the ones that made the org good and not Schalke as the football club. I mean, I feel like it was a hard year on on everyone, not only on the players. I feel like Tim had it really rough because um, Tim is very ambitious. He would have wanted to make a lot more happen for that year, but he was also constrained by the by the football side of the of the org. But we had a lot of people who wanted to make the best out of that situation. And I think Miracle Run is um, a product of everyone's dedication, you know, even through the times where the org was struggling and financially it was not like uh, at the level that could compete with the other LEC orgs. I felt like it made up for it in with passion. Duck, they're done! There's no ways! This is the game for Schalke! They've won the fight, they're gonna get the ace! They're not gonna lose a single person and they've got enough time to push down the base! Can we end? We can end, we can end, we can end. We can end, maybe. Mid, 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 mid. It's oh, on I'm not gonna scream yet, okay? It's over though. There's a card with really sad faces. Uh, can we really only hit? Faces. Can we okay. only hit, by the way? Abadag, you're the best yeah, player in the world, probably. by the way. Only yeah. hit. <laughs> I agree on that one, by the way. We actually did it. I can't yeah, believe we it. Did it. Like, we're so good, by the way. Only Guys, hit. let's act like we lost, okay? okay. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Everyone's sad faces, okay? Oh, we fucked <laughs> Whoa! Yeah! The fact that we were able to turn it around from like two wins, ten losses and make it to playoffs when it was so easy for everyone to just accept that the reality of the situation, I feel like we made a massive achievement with what we had for that year.
Let's start with the German squad, though, because yesterday was a silver lining during an otherwise tough week, both in news and results. It certainly was. I think that coming into the weekend, there was, you know, a bit of a sour tone towards Schalke, given that they will be departing the league at the end of the year. After the slot got announced as sold, uh, I think there was a pretty noticeable change in kind of the attitudes around the office from staff and players. And it frustrated me a lot because I actually really, really wanted to try and make some form of a comeback, even when things were going bad. Um, but I think since the slot was announced sold and we started going through some of the processes of selling here, we lost actually every single game. Schalke has always been a momentum-based team. A lot of that came off the back of Gilius, and a big win against Astralis today could start their big win streak and potentially take them to playoffs. I uh, could, like, but they can match. Oh, they're looking, they're looking. I'm tipping, I'm tipping, I'm tipping. Brum, no flash. Brum, 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 brum. Tipping as well, tipping as well. Brum, brum. Oh, there's a full fight, full fight. Okay. We win, we win, we win. Don't win, win. Everyone tip it. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. It's very good. You should not be afraid. Yeah, we'll be trashed. Kerk, wait for me, if you can. I would, I would, I would. I would, I would, I would. We win this, we win this, we win this. We win this. Uh, grass is nothing, grass is nothing. Bram, 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 bram. Okay, bram, I will stand, bram, I will stand, bram. Look, I'm looking yeah, at yeah. Fush. Look at Lee. I yeah, can't Lena Fush. Lena Fush. Take the Herald. It sounds positive, I think. Excuse me. Keep chasing, keep chasing. We can fight after, we can fight after. Oh, I stand, I stand as well, I stand as well. Look, 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 look. Look, Lucian, I Lucian, speed, Lucian, I give you speed, I give you speed, I give you speed. I'm going on Lucian, I'm going on Lucian. Yeah, yeah, I get him. What, what do you have? Stun? Uh, so I have stun if you stun. Push the burst. Okay, he flushed. Do we get match? Oh man, if we win the last game, next game, we can win that too. I think we're about 6k gold ahead or, or 8k or something. I think it was about 6. And then we just did like a silly mistake. That's where we face check into the bush. The Drake, the Drake, they'll try to one shot it if this is. Oh, I have, I have a uh, blue sky here. Oh, look, 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 look. I'm gonna ult you, I'm gonna ult you, I'm gonna ult you, I'm gonna ult you. Greg is looking for a flash combo. Yo, yeah. look, you need help, you need help. Uh, you can't like this. Hard. I don't have ult, I don't okay. have ult. Okay, I'm dealing a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, I you, just need one reset, guys. Oh. I, I can't do much here. That sucks. He threw, I guess. Just sound like I caught on mid again, and then um, it's just hard for us to play because we were, we've actually never been in these kind of scenarios. I'm running mid. I'm okay, I think. Okay. So look, 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 look. Okay, we need to help him. I will help you, I'm gonna help I'll you. I will speed you out, I will speed you out. Alright, this uh, is bad, guys. Uh, try to run. Yeah, macro is not the hardest thing in the world anymore, I think. It's the hardest part is being on the same page. Actually, five people thinking like one, you know? Those sorts of losses are pretty crushing because you take a win and turn it into a loss, and it really affects the standings a lot. And shut down onto Diego. This should be the game for Astralis. Good. What, what a beautiful display from White Knight. What a beautiful display from Astralis in the way that you team fight with this. I guess we lost. What happened? That's so crazy. He is, turn. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Sucks. We were up 7k. Got two barriers. <laughs> I think it's, it's we're up 7k. Yeah. We could have also ended the game where they like have position on the Drake. But they choose to go in. If you just go both, we end the game. Yeah, I think uh, maybe the YouTube is going to fight. You know, the, the only way to win is like this. Maybe. If you're 7k, you're all up. Seven. Just not all late. Like, yeah, you were both standing three times before Dragon Fight, you just get one shot and die. Like, it happened, you know? Like, yeah. I, know, I know the Volibear yeah. also yeah. took into the last fight as well. It doesn't, it doesn't mean like a mechanical issues or right. games, yeah. whatever. And also, also, like, when in mid-game, like, I'm top lane, and the Lucian is laning against me, and the enemy, like, broke as well, some are having black prior and around mid lane, or, like, these kind of things. Yeah. Like, I just... There are certain things that I didn't really understand why they were happening. Mm, I mean, for sure, it changed a bit after we lost, because obviously it sucks to lose, and we are for sure, like, hang out weekly more often, but once start losing, uh, at least for me, I played more solo queue, I did less time with the team, and I just want to basically play better. And of course, it affects the atmosphere as well. I mean, the more the speed goes, and the more uh, I was like, I'm not gonna lie, like, I was down mentally, uh, even though I shouldn't. 
But as a rookie, I think it's, it's hard, you know, like to play in this situation. And then we lost against the Swiss when we should have win. I think this loss makes everything like harder because it put us in a bad position when we could have been in a good position. And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, it's from here that it started like to, to go down and down and down. We realized like after the first couple of weeks on stage that it is not working. Um, I mean, the results showed, um, and it was not just losing games. It was also the like the way we lost these games. Um, it has been like often like it, we got stumped. We just got stumped. I think it was very obvious that Kyrie was underperforming quite a bit um, in our official matches. We also saw this internally, and we did look into um, a potential of bringing back Gilius. But he was already in a mode where he didn't play a lot of solo queue. He was not really prepared. Um, because the decision came in pretty spontaneously. Dylan messaged me to play scrims again. And at that time I was playing like one solo queue per day. I was not really playing much. And I didn't really play a lot of the meta champs as well. So when I came in to do the scrims, I didn't really feel ready yet. It was not going that well. I think the overall team mood was not so great as well. So it was hard for me to jump right in and, and make a change, you know? He even expressed himself that he's not doing the best. And then, I mean, bringing Gilius was like kind of a Hail Mary moment, you know? Like, I don't think anyone was expecting much, but I guess it was more of a to push Kirei, like in some sense, you know? But I think just, uh, just didn't click with the team again. Just the whole thing about we need to get him back and try to force him to play. I think this was something that was not good, I think. I felt like also Gilles was not as motivated because he was put on a rough spot that he kind of needs to save Schalke again. Um, the team just at that point was struggling so much and it felt so dysfunctional. And even if um, Burke might have uh, been able to perform individually, like, I don't even think it was his fault, necessarily. The team was just, for a number of reasons, extremely dysfunctional. And it just felt like, after a couple of days of scrimming with him, that the motivation on this team was just, after losing to some of the worst teams in the league in scrims, that the motivation was just gone. I mean, for me, when I heard that they won't try to this, I'm like, I mean, for myself, I'm like a person that really criticized myself a lot, um, more than a lot of players, I think, like every time I make a mistake, I'm really aware of it and I always want to fix my own issues first before I fix anyone else's issue. Even the feedback for Team BDS have been much better than expected. Um, I did expect that they get a lot of blame from the community to getting the slot. Hello. And why blame? Yeah, because everyone wanted to have, for example, K Corp, the French guys, and the Spanish guys wanted Giants. And, but there also have been a lot like they have power, they have a really good uh, uh, Rainbow Six team, really, really good Rocket League team, they will invest. We can't really be sure how much it affected the players because even if you were to say, um, yeah, they had really nothing to play for since they couldn't play for Schalke, you still want to prove yourself as a player and you still want to go out with a bang and you still want to prop up your market value in that year. So they are still competitors at the end of the day. So these are not players that are going to step on stage and be like, okay, I don't care about this game. I don't believe that for a second, but we can't underestimate the mental strain of all that stuff going on around you when you're just trying to focus on the game, when you're not winning a lot of games, when you're trying to focus on getting your synergy back in, in, in the right place and all this is happening around you and you're thinking about your future as a young player, as an older player, as whoever. And I don't think it was very easy for them to play with that pressure, even though it probably affected everyone in a different way. <laughs> Today is And team is in there. Um, when, when they are done with the scrim, I will also show you that. Um, yeah, but this is still, maybe you can give a bit better idea about what you're doing here and what you are doing with the team. And we created this one back then because we thought it's a super good idea. Like, it also cost a little bit of money. And we're never using that. <laughs> I don't think it would affect us at all. There is no reason why it, it would affect us at all.
And if anyone can like blame it on that, then it's just bullshit. And SK Gaming will pick up their second win of summer on stage in Berlin. Broken Blade getting picked off. Kaiser just barely taking down Neon. Oh, baby, it's an absolute slaughter. Yeah. Matt Lyons taking this one. Another attention to the second Nexus turret. Limit will prevent the record for now. Five Six seconds. seconds. Four seconds. Rogue destroy Shalka. Oh. Misfits in dominant fashion take out Shalka. And their Nexus is going to get taken down as well. 25 minutes. There's so much pressure now on these players, whether it's finding time to make the mid jungle work, like Ender was talking about, or converting scrim performance into stage performance, like you were talking about. Ultimately, this is their last chance to do it if they want to make playoffs. Shaka cannot lose any more games this season, or they are out. There was definitely a lot of tension going into week seven. Um, I didn't really feel uh, too scared. Like I, was, I thought we were actually going to win those games because I just have had like a, a gut feeling that we were going to win. If you won actually against Excel in Astralis in that week, we could actually maybe do it. But if you, if we lost against Excel, then we know that our chances were really, really low. Our raw odds straight up making playoffs right now is higher than it was last year when we did some crazy shit. Yeah. The miracle run was like 0-4, and right now I think 0-6. Not bad. The entire later half of the summer split basically came down to trying to find some sort of footing, some si sort of reliable way to play the game that I feel like people could perform and carry on stage. Um, I think we tried a lot of different things, tried putting a lot of different people in roles that have responsibility or that can get resources or that can carry um, mid jungles that are gank heavy, stuff that's roam heavy. Um, hyper carries bot, uh, weak side bot camping top. Like it was just trying to find something that we felt could work, and it felt like no matter what um, we would try, it never. I never felt confident. I never felt like we had something that I felt like we could really excel at. No, no, no. It's actually we cannot make it. What do you mean? You of course you can. Yeah. We have half half percent chance. No. Yes. But that we have ten percent if we win all of our games. So first of all, you just assume we win <laughs> because. Sorry, I'm making assumptions based on our actual results beforehand. <laughs> and those assumptions don't allow me to assume that we'll win any game. <laughs> no one is motivated anymore the next week. And it, it, and like, everything will just end on such a negative feeling. Yeah, you know? I agree. It's just, it's just shit feeling. Like, just, it's better to just be alive for the last week and then you play and you probably lose versus G2 or something else. But, you know, just go. And it's still fine. It was like this kind of cycle of trying to find a solution, trying to be really positive, solution-oriented, and come up with something, trying to get everybody together to be on the same page and make this happen, trying it. And then some of these weeks, actually, we even really thought it would work, and then you just lose and lose hard. You look at Limit already, he's burned both summoner spells, but at the same time, the cross map come through. Well, there's no flash here for Broken Blade, Zenzara stepping forward, gets the chop. Alan Mist comes backwards, what? and it's white. Okay, feel okay. to be back. And that is going to cost them. Once again, Astralis with the tempo going on this one. Oh, Broken Blade. I don't know if he's going to be able to outplay this one. Knocked up into the air. The Hell of Missile by some time. Dashes away to safety with the chomp comes out. Zenzara the kill secures the kill. Oh, we just got level three games to die to it. Hmm. Just whatever. No. You have no flash, you will get the, you know. Yeah, like once yeah, again, fine. setting his sights on Magi Felix. This time the dredge line connects. There's no shockwave. There's no flash. And this time it works out. Shalka get their second kill. It's going to take some time for them to do it. Obviously, once again, they have the satural charge to work through. Magi Felix under attack again, though. He keeps getting hit by those dredge lines. Cataclysm committed as well. It will be the third death of the game. Early gank was good, and then he stole enemy bot jungle for the cheese gank. Like he responded correctly. Tele Teleport comes in, he walks across a ward. What can he do as he dashes forward? The Hallowed Mist comes out, snip, snip, snip. Holding on to the ultimate four now, not enough damage just yet. Dashing backwards, it's a 7,000 gold difference. His broken blade heals up, survives so incredibly long. The Shockwave catches three, but there's simply not enough follow up. Shalka cannot stand tall long enough for Neon to finish up the fight. Ne Bro, what are you doing there? <laughs> Felix is running for his life as Zenzara is the next target as well. It's just this awkward phase. The teleport into the Nexus and Shalka are eliminated from playoffs. Astralis take the win. 
I never expected them to drop down so far because you know so much about the Schalke behind the scenes and about the coaching staff and about the things that the team has been through in the past and the experience and the resiliency to bounce back from games that they've lost and to make sure that they can make a miracle run or that they can win the games that are needed. When there was nothing left to play for in more ways than one, unfortunately, the Schalke players did make to, to go out with the Huzza. They were able to get some big wins on the board at the end of the season, but unfortunately, that 10th place is going to be a very, very dark mark on their record. Nothing. I have my junior and I don't get my pocket. I'm just getting fucked the whole game. I'm saying everything that needs to happen and it's not happening. What can I do? I can't do anything. I don't know. Every fucking time where I call it that I need help but I don't get help. So I can't do shit. I'm sorry but like then I have to freeze for 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, just, just fuck off. Like, fuck the shit game. I can't play. After I knew we were out it I felt like really empty, you know, because it was, I think it was two and a half years since I didn't make playoffs. Didn't want to feel like this again, obviously, but this is sports, this is a business, someone has to not go to playoffs, I guess. And this is, uh, at this time it's me, but it's really not something that I want to do again, ever. I think it's your fault, honestly. How's the my fault? Take the wave up to level one, you see how the blue, the wave is bouncing, and we have MTP. And, yeah, and then what? You can stay in the bush and not walk up when this enemy jungler is fucked. He's losing his blue, he's losing his what full bot side. What do you mean I'm fucked? What, what happened? I don't care what needs to happen. I'm communicating, they can die me. Yeah, that's, that's, what most, that's what's fucking yeah, me. Uh, it's not a game. Of course, it doesn't help though. Yeah, of course it doesn't help, yeah. but it's 300 gold. Yeah. That's all I lose. I know. We need all this top here and we need the TP. And then you're if fine. If you think no? that gank had anything to do with this dive, then you're just wrong. What? It's, not, it's not what I'm saying. Dude. But and I still have TP, and it's still fine, and then they die me again. When I'm calling, they can die me. Yeah. But if you're thinking that 300 gold that I fucked up no, matters in this die. situation, it's just wrong. wrong. I mean, it's just not true. I know that I fucked up there. It's hard to say why we failed. I think it's always a mix of everything. It's a mix of Schalke selling the slots and putting pressure on all of the, all of the people working on Schalke. Uh, it's a mix of both players and staff failing, working together or something. After week two or three, players lost trust in each other. Um, players separated from each other, not competing as a team. Everyone is like, guys, it's over. I, I don't know what we're gonna do. It's really bad because we were winning until we lost versus Vitality in script. We had a good hopes. But after that, we were losing every single script. Um, maybe also players um, at that at that time already looked too much into themselves like what can I do best to be in the best position for next off season because they knew we are not around anymore and we couldn't have talked with them about like a potential future like the biggest takeaway I would take from this season is I don't feel like a single game we lost as a team if we won, we won somehow randomly over like a one in nine performance by either uh, Nuclear or Sergan. And then when we lost, it wasn't a lose where you feel like okay, the team was just enemy team was just better, and they deserve to win. And we lost and made it harder for ourselves. So this next game is going to be a bit of a weird one because simultaneously we're witnessing the end of Schalke and their incredible contributions to European esports with these last few games. And we're also witnessing G2 fight for top four. So the question for me, question for you at home, uh, is, is this going to be a funeral for Schalke? Is this going to be a sad couple of games? Or is this going to be a wake? Is this going to be a party? Are we going to remember them with joy? Are we going to look back at this as the split where they 2 owed G2? So basically it was a viewing party for the last uh, LEC match uh, from Schalke. I was kind of the surprise guest at this event. Arriving there, being kind of announced that, uh, hey, Vizi Chachi has arrived. And many fans were already instantly coming to me to greet me, have a picture of me, just say how, how much they loved the team when I was playing at Schalke. And that actually means 
a lot for us players. That was something that touched my heart and tells me that it's, it's definitely worth coming back to this scene because of how much support you get from people. I was grateful. Actually, I was really surprised with the hardcore fan base that Chalke has. He's for sure one of the most passionate fans on, of the league. I, I'm not a fan of that experiment. I know how active they are and how supportive they are and how loud they are. Thank you so much for everything and ich bin dankbar. So thank you fans for supporting the team over the years. And obviously, thank you fans for supporting me over the time that I was there and really embracing me with open arms. So this is the end of the line for Schalke. And I just want to say for everyone, you know, the fans that have supported them for all these years, it wasn't in vain. We have loved seeing you support the team for all these years. And you've really made a lot of what the LEC has been uh, because of your excitement for the team. The fans are, are just super. I think more passionate fans than the Schalke fans are rare to find. What I'm most proud of is that I think our staff and org really managed to do more with less. I think that was kind of the theme of this org. The most magical moment was the miracle run. When we won so many games in a row and made playoffs like against all odds with a year that was just so, so, so difficult. Uh, was it something unreal? We actually felt like, oh my God, we fucking did it. As I said, I even said in the camera, even my arch was sweating. I was like... <laughs> investment in talent, investment in the fans and in the community, and the results to back it up. That is really what defined Schalke throughout these years, and some of the most beautiful stories we've had in Europe for all this time. The miracle run in itself, the finals appearances, the multiple one series away from Worlds, will always be a part of LEC history. You never really could tell how good Schalke was, and you could never really tell if they were bad. And it's only when they start to beat G2 in all the best of one regular seasons, and they start to put themselves in the finals of summer seasons, and they start to make these miracle runs where you're like, huh, I guess I was wrong. Schalke's pretty good. Like maybe in 10, 15 years, you can remember, you know, I played for Schalke. Maybe it wasn't the football club or whatever, like other departments they have, but I still had their name on the jersey, you know. Schalke and Ulfir would not have worked without those people that were actually behind the scenes, that were leading the project. Everyone was pushing really hard, all the way from content, all the way up to Tim, the CEO. Yeah, it was just like a feeling that I didn't really get to experience so far with anyone else. Because you don't accidentally get a miracle run. You don't accidentally get to the finals. You need a team for that behind the stage. You have been an example of what it is to be an organization in the LEC, and I hope that legacy will last forever. Yeah, to everyone who I worked with, I would like to to thank all of you. I want to say thank you to Tim Reichert. Viewer, caster, um, player, staff member, anything. Um, thanks to everyone. Für all diejenigen, die dann hier eine aktive Rolle gespielt haben, sonst wäre das nicht so erfolgreich gewesen. Sports can only exist because of the people. And I am proud that we contribute so much into that.
wir sind Schalke, asoziale Schalke, schlafen unter Brücken. Oh, oh. das war knapp. Das war knapp. Thank you to all the Schalke fans in particular. Um, I think we've had one of the most passionate and hardcore fan bases of some of the orcs here. And I think part of that's because of some of the stories we've managed to create here. And I think it's very rare that orcs have some fan base that even when you go on these crazy lost streaks, they still support you and they still um, like believe in you. And um, that's always like the environment that I wanted on Schalke and I'm happy. I just want to thank the fans for continuing that as a fan base.